Hey everybody, Ashton here with Incense with another fragrance review. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new release from the House of Dolce & Gabbana, Light Blue Pour Homme O Intense. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and do the presentation outside this time. So the presentation is pretty much the same as on Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Pour Homme. The only difference really is the juice color is this nice blue and it's got a frosted glass that's a little bit of a different shade than the original. So the box, uh, and the ant is crawling on me, come on man. The box is a nice velvet, just like the previous iteration. Got the name of the house, name of the fragrance, O Intense, Pour Homme, and then size, I got the 200 mil. On the back you have ingredients down here. And then the batch code is next to the barcode right here. Like I just said, the bottle looks nice. It's going to look good in any collection. Nothing doing on the back here. Badge code is on your sticker right here. The cap does click into place, but I don't trust it all that much, honestly. And the atomizer is decent, but not amazing. That's the presentation for Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue O Intense. The bottle looks really, really nice. So the question with this one is really going to be, what do you think about this fragrance, the original Light Blue Pour Homme, because this really is what I would consider a legitimate, intense version of another fragrance. A lot of flankers say that, and then they'll take a completely different route, and it won't smell anything at all like the original, but this one's pretty close to the original, honestly. Now, it's been correctly mentioned before that a lot of that salt from the opening of the original Light Blue Pour Homme is gone, so that is definitely the case. The salt is toned down a lot. It's still there a little bit, but it's not as strong. It's not as harsh. You know, some people would say that the opening from light blue is a little bit harsh. That's been toned down. You do get a lot of citrus off the top, that orange, that grapefruit, that definitely comes through. And it's aquatic. It's definitely aquatic. There are spiders outside right now. This looks like it's all fantastic nature green, blah, blah, blah. But it's not. There's like a wasp that just attacked me. There's a spider crawling on my bottle over here. Come on. This does have a little bit of a sea salty aquatic vibe, but like I said, that sea salt's toned down a little bit from the original light blue. Now it's not like a sea salty aquatic vibe that you would find in Healy's Cell Marin or Bond Number no. Nine's uh, Coney Island. So it's nothing like that. It's super clean, super refreshing. And the fragrance is really linear. It doesn't change a whole bunch. Uh, what you get in the opening stays pretty much that way through the mid to the dry down. There are tiny changes. You know, the citrus doesn't pop as much as it does at the beginning. There's a little bit of a musky dry down. But this is not a fragrance that does a great big change from the open to the dry down. You know, it's not one that goes through a whole bunch of phases. It stays pretty consistent. Oh my God, the spider is back. The spider is back. Ah, spider is on me. <laughs> So like I was saying, in my opinion, how much you like this may come down to how much you like this. Because O Intense basically took light blue, made it a little bolder, a little richer, and toned down that sea salty vibe in the opening. Personally, I like light blue. It doesn't blow me away. If you gave me the choice between these two, I actually prefer O Intense. Longevity for me is not fantastic. It's more in the five to six hour range. I was looking on Fragrantica and a lot of people have it ranked super high in longevity, super high in projection. That's not the case for me. I'm sure that's just a lot of people that were voting arbitrarily. So longevity for me, five to six hour range. Projection is best in the first hour to hour and a half. So it puts it right in that kind of moderate range of summer fragrances in terms of uh, longevity and projection. So the performance is moderate pretty much the whole way through. Obviously, this is a warm weather fragrance. So we're talking spring, summer, possibly fall, depending on where you live. Uh, as it starts to get cooler, just like with the original Light Blue, this doesn't really work as well. It's, it's suited for warm weather. It smells best in warm weather, performs best in warm weather. Uses, casual daytime. It is what it is. Basically, the same places you would wear Light Blue, the same places you would wear Aqua de Joe, anything like that, that's where you would wear this as well. So that's gonna bring me to the rating. And this one, I'm kind of flipping back and forth between a seven, 7.5, 7, 7.5. 7, 7 so I'll give it a 7.25, just because. 
Overall, it's a good release. It takes the original light blue, makes a few tweaks, and depending on what you like in your light blue, you'll either like it more or like it less than the original. It just depends on if you like those couple of tweaks that they did or if you don't like the couple of tweaks that they did. All right, guys, that's my review of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Pour Homme O Intense. In my opinion, you should probably wait a few months until this shows up at discounters and pick it up at a better price. But if you've got to have it, you can find it all over the place at this point in stores or on Dolce & Gabbana's website. If you smelled this one, let me know what you think about it. As always, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.